One of the worst things about studying for the LSAT is when you're studying ineffectively and you don't even realize it. That's why when I start with a new student, one of the first things I help them do is create a personalized day-by-day -day study plan, laying out exactly what to do to remove all the guesswork about how to study, when to do LSAT prep test questions by type, when to do timed sections, and when to move on to full-length timed practice tests. A lot of students out there, unfortunately, are still studying ineffectively using no study plan or an ineffective study plan, not even realizing that they could be doing it so much better. So today I'm going to share with you 10 keys to how to create a terrible LSAT study plan that you should avoid at all costs. The first is simply obsessively taking practice tests. I term this the obsessive practice exam narrative. The idea that taking test after test will magically unlock the hidden secrets of the LSAT when all you're really doing is wasting your time burning through valuable practice material. Instead, what you want to do is take fewer time practice tests and review them in depth. The second big mistake is looking at explanations and using them as a crutch. Using someone else's so-called perfect way of solving the question untimed is no substitute for doing your own reasoning and review through the questions and figuring out what would be an effective strategy to use under real-world LSAT test day conditions when you're doing the exam questions, of course, timed. You don't want to use explanations as a crutch, preventing you from developing your own framework and your own strategy that you could actually reasonably use on test day itself. The third big mistake is using fake LSAT questions, using books like Barron's or Kaplan or LSAT for dummies. These books are full of mistakes because it's actually really hard to write realistic, actual LSAT questions that contain no mistakes at all. A lot of these books that didn't want to pay the licensing fees to LSAC to use official questions are using their own half put together fake questions that are unrealistic and full of errors. And there's nothing worse than getting a question wrong, not because you made a mistake, but because the people writing the question themselves made a mistake. Instead, you want to stick with real, official, actual LSAT questions. LSAC publishes these in books of 10 exams on Amazon for roughly 20 bucks each, but even better than getting them in the books is using LSAC's Law Hub Advantage, which gives you the vast majority of LSAC questions in the actual online format that you'll be experiencing on test day itself. The number four, the fourth key to a terrible LSAT study plan is doing questions untimed endlessly without ever moving on to timed practice exams. So you don't want to just drill questions by type, individual question by individual question. You want to, of course, move on to doing the questions in the context of a full section, and then eventually doing four sections together, which would be, of course, a full LSAT practice test. I know drilling questions is fun. You get a kick out of it. You get the immediate feedback if you got it wrong or if you got it right. But of course, eventually, you're going to want to move on to seeing what LSAT test day itself will actually be like. And that requires moving on to timed sections to work on your pacing and then bringing it all together with full length time practice tests for endurance. The fifth big mistake is stressing about the LSAT test date before you. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because it's not just about the LSAT that you are scheduled for. Of course, you can retake the LSAT. It is totally fine. Law schools do not average multiple LSAT scores, but rather they only consider the highest score because that's all they have incentive to care about. So let's say hypothetically that you're registered for the June LSAT. You might want to consider registering for the August LSAT as well, just for peace of mind, knowing that you have it as a backup. If you're aiming for August, you register for the September LSAT for the same peace of mind, knowing that it's not all riding on just that one LSAT test date before you because you're already set to retake it in a month or two if you truly need to. The sixth big mistake is burning through all your practice material. I alluded to this earlier, when I, number one, when I talked about just doing exam after exam after exam, but you also want to think about the fact that you have a finite number of practice tests available. Now, with the new LSAT prep test numbering, there are only 58 numbered exams, 101 through 158 at the moment, and 
you could get through those faster than you might expect. And after that, you're going to have to dig a bit more to get your hands on the out of print exams beyond those and do a little bit more digging. And then of course, you're not going to be getting those in the online format. So make sure that you're using your practice material carefully and you're using it deliberately that when you're taking a practice test, you're doing so for a reason and that you've already built the strong foundation before moving into those practice tests. The seventh big mistake is taking practice tests without analyzing your mistakes or reviewing the wrong answers. So you've got to slow down and thoroughly review Every question that you get wrong is an opportunity to learn something new, and you want to make sure that you are extracting the key insights from your LSAT review process before you go on to the next time to practice test. I've developed a framework for reviewing LSAT questions called the Socratic Review Method, and it's the cornerstone of my LSAT courses and my coaching. You can check out the links below the video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. Now, the eighth big mistake is getting bogged down and bored by those 500 page LSAT prep textbooks. They're super boring, believe me. I worked through a lot of those myself back when I was studying for the LSAT. The LSAT just isn't that complicated. You don't want to spend too much time on the theory of the 15 different types of logical reasoning questions or some overcomplicated framework for solving reading comprehension passages that would never work under timed conditions. So I recommend instead using a more concise LSAT guide to get the basics, or alternatively, you could just get an online LSAT course where you get bite-sized videos boiling down the foundation in just a couple minutes per question type so that you can quickly move on to doing the actual questions themselves. And by the way, if you're interested in a book like that, check out my book, Unlocking LSAT Success, available at unlocklsatsuccess.com, link below this video to find out more. Now, the ninth big mistake is focusing on quantity over quality. You don't want to just complete as many practice test questions as possible without thoroughly reviewing them. So your progress on the LSAT is not simply a matter of getting through a certain number of questions, but it's also a matter of how many insights can you gain from doing those questions. So it may be more effective to do fewer questions and fewer exams and thoroughly review them rather than just aiming to get as many questions under your belt as possible with only a surface level review or no review at all. Now, the 10th mistake, and by the way, there's going to be an 11th bonus one, so stay tuned for that. But the 10th mistake is studying only when you feel like it without a consistent schedule. If you're doing just one or two days a week of LSAT prep, it's tough to actually feel like you have forward momentum in your studying. And it's too easy to just miss that day altogether. And then, of course, you're, a week is going by, two weeks are going by without you actually making forward progress. You start getting rusty on the material. And so I recommend that you aim to do something for the LSAT at least every other day, if not every single day. So lay out a consistent study schedule for yourself where you're doing at least even five, 10 minutes a day, five, six days a week. If you want to take a day off, that's fine. Of course, I actually recommend taking days off and I build them into my LSAT study plans for this reason, but you don't want it to be a matter of how you're feeling or what your mood is. You want it blocked off on your calendar to make sure that it happens. Now, I mentioned there's going to be an 11th bonus tip I'm going to share with you in this video, and that tip is going to cover one of the most important and stressful mistakes of top students aiming for 170 plus on the LSAT. But before I get into that, I wanted to recap for you that at LSAT Unplugged, we create personalized day-by-day -day study plans for all of our students using my laser approach to LSAT prep that I've covered in plenty of other videos here on the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel. So the 11th bonus tip here is worrying about burning through material. I talked earlier about the risk of burning through material, but also consider there's plenty of value from redoing and reviewing practice tests. If you wouldn't get a 180 on that exam, there's still value to be learned and gained by redoing that question. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.